What's going on guys? My name is Richard and welcome back to another Python for Finance tutorial. Today I've got a really cool program to share with you guys and we'll basically be creating this chart right here complete with uh, pivot points, candlesticks, Bollinger Bands, moving averages, and green and blue dot indicators. Um, basically this is recreating my setup in TC2000 and I think this program will really give you an appreciation for all the coding and math that goes into uh, creating TradingView, TC2000, uh, TrendSpider, all those different charting softwares. Um, and hopefully you find this interesting. And if you do, please remember to leave a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this, hit that red subscribe button as well. And as always, the code for this video will be in the description below. Uh, but please, if you do intend to use it, make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe to my channel. But getting into it, we first need to import the relevant libraries, and we definitely need a couple extra this week, uh, such as the matplotlib uh, ones right here, and also the matplotlib finance, we need the candlestick OHLC. And make sure you spell this right, because I am using the OHLC, not the OCHL, uh, you have to get that right. Then moving down, we've got the usual YF PDR override, which basically allows us to use the Yahoo Finance database. Um, then right here, you're going to want to input any moving averages that you want to use on your chart. So right now I've got the 10, uh, 10 day simple, 30 day simple, and 50 day simple as well. But you can easily change that. Um, and then here we get um, the start date for our data. And this time delta right here is basically uh, making sure that we're going back far enough in our data to account for the longest period simple moving average. Uh, then we have the now, which basically is the endpoint of our data, basically as recent as we can get. And then, as always, we prompt the user to enter a stock ticker symbol. And then down here, we enter the main loop that is basically just making sure that the uh, user wants to keep running this program. And then finally, we create the pandas data frame. And this time, we're going to be calling it prices. So instead of the usual DF, we'll be instead calling it prices. Um, but that's the usual... Um, usual syntax right there. Then we have to create some plots. So we create both fig and x1 as plt dot subplots. And if you remember, plt is matplotlib dot pyplot. Um, so moving down, we then want to basically calculate all those moving averages for all those days. So uh, this loop right here, this for loop, iterates through the SMA's used array. And for each of those, it basically calculates the moving average. Um, and saves it to a new column in that pandas data frame and saves it as prices, SMA underscore, and then whatever period it is, whether it's 10, 30, or 50. Um, so we've got the moving averages taken care of. And kind of the way that this program works is I'm building this, um, this setup right here step by step. So we're now covering the moving averages and next up will be the Bollinger Bands and then et cetera, et cetera. But going back to the program to calculate the Bollinger Bands, we first need to define the moving average that we're going to use um, for our Bollinger Bands. And I like the 15 period simple moving average, but obviously um, I think 20, 20 is the standard, but uh, whatever you want to use, you can input that here. And then I'm going to use two standard deviations. But obviously all these things you can change to suit your needs. And moving on, we first need to calculate that simple moving average and then also the standard deviation for each of those days um, in the data set. And to explain the Bollinger Bands a little bit more, I am going to go into TC2000 and give that as an example. Um, so my Bollinger Bands right here are these gray lines right here, um, and the area between them is in blue. Uh, so basically what Bollinger Bands are, and somebody asked this question on my last video, is um, basically you have a moving average in the middle, and then the bands are two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below. And basically it's a statistical analysis of the price data based on the simple moving average and the standard deviations. And the idea is that um, at any given time, the price will most likely be within this range. And when it goes above, it's likely to come back in towards the moving average. And when it's below, as with Dexcom right here, it's likely to come back up and revert to the mean. So um, if you're confused by that, um, or still are, just let me know down below in the comment section. But moving on, you can see that to calculate the lower Bollinger Band, all we need to do is use that simple moving average and then subtract for the lower one two times the um, standard deviation at that date. 
And then similar enough to do the upper band, you have to use the simple moving average plus two times the standard deviation at that price. And then this last line right here actually doesn't have anything to do with the Bollinger Bands, but what it is doing is creating a new column that is a converted date column. And it's converting from a timestamp to a number. And we basically need this to create the OHLC bars, which you'll see in a second. Uh, but moving down, we now are focused on creating the 1044 stochastic, which if we go to TC2000, looks like this down here. So we've got um, a fast stochastic in red, and then a simple moving average of that stochastic in blue. And I use a 1044 stochastic as I was taught from Dr. Eric Wish. And basically the 104 stochastic is the 10 one stochastic average four times. Um, and then the um, percent D is once again, another moving average of that four times. So this might actually make more sense if I bring up the Investopedia page about the stochastic. So let me do that real quick. Um, and that might help explain um, exactly what I'm talking about. So let's do this and then do stochastic. And we'll bring up the formula that I use to calculate this because all the different indicators that you do use in T2000 or TradingView or whatever charting software you use, they have a mathematical formula. And you can see right here the, um, the formula for the stochastic. You've got the closing price minus the low of whatever time period you're using over the high of the time period minus the low of the time period. So basically it's kind of a percentage um, that tells you where the current price is within that range of high to low. And then the 10 for stochastic would be this calculation done four times in a row and then averaged. Um, so the average of the four previous days, that is the current days um, 10 for stochastic. And then the 10 for four is that average one more time. Uh, so let's take a look at the code for this operation. Uh, so first up here, I basically um, write my parameters and obviously you can change this if you like um, a different set of stochastics, but I'm using a 10 period. So it's going over um, the 10 previous days and using that as information. Then I want to average that first stochastic four times. And then to calculate the slow stochastic, I want to average it four more times. Uh, so first thing we need to do is find the high of the period. Um, so that's what this operation does right here. Um, and I call that row high, and this is saving this data to a new column in the pandas data frame. And then I need to do the same thing for the lows. Basically, those are the necessary things that we need for that formula. So we've got the high and low right here. And then to first calculate the 10 one stochastic, I basically do that operation that we saw in, um, in Investopedia about the stochastic. It's the, um, the close minus the low over the high minus the low times 100. So that is the 10 one stochastic. And then as I said, to find the 10 four stochastic, which is the fast red stochastic, we need to average that um, over the past four days. So that's what this is doing. The window size is the moving average, which is four days. Um, and then to find the 10 four four stochastic, we once again have to average the, um, the fast stochastic over four days once again. So that is what we need to do. And then moving on, I also create a column in the pandas data frame called GD for green dot. And I basically save it to the high prices um, just so I have uh, the right length column. And we're gonna use this column right here to store a um, basically green dot day. Um, and then we also create an array called OHLC, which is gonna store the price data so that we can create that candlestick chart. And I understand that this might be a bit confusing. So please, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section. I'd be happy to help you out. Uh, but moving on, we've got this line right here, which basically gets rid of those extra days um, after we've calculated all the moving averages that we need to do. So if you remember at the very beginning, we added on some time delta that is the length of the longest SMA that we use. So we're basically just getting rid of those extra days after we've already used the information. Um, so that's what that's for. And next up, we basically have to uh, create a bunch of different variables and arrays that will help store data as we go through, um, as we go through the pandas data frame and look for green dots and blue dots and build our candlestick chart. 
Uh, so first we've got green dot date and this is an array and it's going to store the dates of the green dots. Um, then we've got green dot, which is going to store the values associated with those green dots. Then we've got last K, which will store yesterday's fast stochastic, the red one. Then last D, which will store yesterday's slow stochastic, which is blue. Um, we've got the last low, which will store yesterday's low, last close, yesterday's close, and the last lower Bollinger Band, which will store the value of yesterday's lower Bollinger Band. And I misspelled a lot of things right here. I was going pretty fast, uh, so sorry about that. Um, but now we've got the main for loop that we're going to need uh, to calculate those green and blue dots as well as creating the candlesticks. Um, so first we have to create um, the, each individual candlestick. And to this we basically have an array called OHLC and we basically append to it for each day the, um, the day, the open, the high, the low, and the adjusted close values. So basically if you think about it, everything that we would need to um, draw out a candlestick for ourselves. And then ohlc.append just adds that to that existing array, creating an array of columns, basically. Then moving on, we've got the code in this for loop associated with finding green dots. And right here is the logic to find a green dot. The um, current K price has to be greater than the D price so the fast stochastic has to be greater than the slow stochastic and the fast stochastic had to be below the slow stochastic yesterday and the um, fast stochastic had to be below 60 the previous day. Um, so let's show this in TC2000 because this might be a bit confusing. Um, so right here we've got a green dot on the 20th for Dexcom and you can see that yesterday the fast stochastic was below the blue and now today it's finally crossed above and now that value of the fast stochastic is above the slow one and the fast stochastic is still below 60. Uh, so that's exactly what this if statement checks for. And if that's true, we basically plot um, a green dot right on that value at that date. So that's what this does. The marker of um, O basically makes a dot. This is the size of the dot and we have a green color. And then once we do have a green dot, we basically append the date to the green dot date and the value to the green dot um, array as well. And you might notice that I've got a couple different options up here. This is because I was trying to find um, different ways to basically create this green dot. And it actually took me quite a while, but, but eventually I found that this is the best way. And you can actually have a ton of different marker styles. So if you just look up plt.plot markers, you can get a whole bunch of different options. Instead of this O, I think you can do a star, um, you can do an octagon, you can do so many different things. But I like a standard green dot, so that's what I'm going with. Moving down, we've got the code checking for the lower Bollinger Band bounces. And the logic for this is that you need uh, the low of today or yesterday to be below the lower Bollinger Band, and the current close is above that lower Bollinger Band and above yesterday's close. So once again, either the last low was below the last lower Bollinger Band, or the current low is below the current lower Bollinger Band, and the current close is above the last close, and the current close is above the lower Bollinger Band. Um, and you also need the fast stochastic to be currently below 60. So that might have been a little bit confusing, but maybe watch it a couple times and I'll actually kind of give you an example um, using Dexcom as well. So let's let's scroll in to this last Bollinger Band dot. Um, so on this day, you can see that the day previously, the low was below the lower Bollinger Band and the current close is above the last close and it's above the lower Bollinger Band and the stochastic at that time was oversold. Um, and on this one, you can see that once again, the low of the previous day, and even maybe on that day, was below the lower Bollinger Band, but the stock recovered and bounced off of that and closed above the lower Bollinger Band and the uh, close of yesterday. Um, so it worked well right here, not so much here as the market was selling off, uh, but usually it's a pretty good entry, especially when the stock is really, really tight. So that is the bounce off the lower Bollinger Band, and this is the code right here um, for that logic. Um, and then right here, we're basically just storing the values to make sure that we have up to date, uh, last K, last D, last low, last close, and last lower Bollinger Band uh, prices. 
So moving on right here, we are finally out of that for loop. And now we're just going to basically plot the moving averages and Bollinger Bands. Uh, so first up, we've got a for loop that kind of goes through all the different SMAs that you uh, decide to use and plots them using dot plot. And then we also use dot plot to uh, plot the upper band and lower band in light gray. And once again, the customizability of Python is basically unlimited. So you can choose whatever color you want, um, plot style, line style, really whatever uh, you choose to look up and learn how to use. So next, we're finally ready to plot those candlesticks. And we basically plot them in the subplot that is AX1. And then we give it this OHLC info. And just as a refresher, if you remember what this OHLC stands for, it is basically a stored array of all those different um, open, high, low, close prices um, that we found in this for loop. Um, so we give it all the prices. We set the width of the candlesticks right here. I like 0.5. You can choose that. Uh, to be really whatever you want. The up color is black, which is K, the down color is red, and the alpha is 0.75. Um, then we have to do a couple things, because if you just do that and plot it, you'll see that we lost our dates on the X axis, and we kind of want those. Um, so this is actually why we created that other date column that stores things in um, number format, because we aren't able to do it directly from the df.index um, of the dates. Uh, so here we basically change the subplot x-axis um, using set major formatter and we change the date format um, from number format to this format right here, which is year, month, day. Um, and then we also added a couple more x-axis labels because by default I think there's only three dates listed on the x-axis and we kind of want um, more than that just so it's more, more readable. Um, so we change that to eight. Once again, you can change this to whatever you want. And we also kind of rotate all those labels um, for increased readability, because if they're all kind of smushed together, you can't really read it that well. Uh, so that's it for the chart um, as far as the candlesticks, moving averages and Bollinger Bands go. Um, and now we have to do those pivot points. And this is actually a review of my previous video. So I'll link that above and kind of skip going through the logic. Um, but if you're curious and don't want to watch that video, you can just read the comments right here. Um, but I highly encourage you to check out that video. I think it's very well done and it'll teach you a lot of things about arrays um, and also logic as well. Uh, so skipping the pivot um, info, all we have left to do is um, plot those pivots on the chart and annotate them. Um, and basically uh, you use the plot date feature to basically plot that initial arrow. Um, and we also plot that annotation of the text um, for those pivot points. And then moving on, we basically change the X label to date, the Y label to price, and the title to the stock name, and then daily. Um, and we also set some margins here using YLIM just to make sure that um, nothing gets cut off. Um, and then finally, you have to do plt.show, otherwise all that work will be for nothing. And then finally, we have another prompt uh, to ask the user for another stock. Uh, so that's a quick overview of the code for this project. And once again, it will be linked down below in the description. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this video. It is definitely very cool to basically be able to create your own mini charting software and just kind of understanding how all this stuff works, I think is very useful and it will definitely make you appreciate uh, TradingView, TC2000, all those different charting softwares and all the data really that they have to uh, go through and manage. Um, so thanks so much for watching. Once again, uh, make sure to leave a like down below on the video and I'll see you guys in future videos.